Hi, I'm Nick Theodosakis, and we're going to discuss immunology today. This is definitely a complex topic, and one that I'd argue requires just a little more rote memorization than certain others. But if you put in the time and effort, I think you'll be well rewarded. Fortunately, for the purposes of your Step 1, studying only the basics of immunology have proven to be particularly high yield. Let's begin by discussing the anatomy of the immune system. The lymph node is a secondary lymphoid organ. The integral component of innate, nonspecific immunity grossly has many afferent and at least one efferent lymphatic. Recall from the renal chapter that afferent channels, in this case lymphatics, but in other instances this may be some sort of vessel, bring material in, while efferents take a pathway away from the site. The lymph node is an encapsulated organ that functions to facilitate macrophage filtration, storage, and activation of B and T cells, as well as antibody production. As we discuss the immune system in more detail, you should begin to notice the role the lymph node plays in its maturation. The lymph node follicle is the site of B cell localization and proliferation. This region is located in the outer cortex. Follicles are either primary or secondary. The former are dense and dormant, while the latter have a pale central germinal center and are active. The innermost portion of the lymph node is the medulla, which consists of closely packed lymphocytes and plasma cells in areas which are known as medullary cords and medullary sinuses. It's in the medullary sinus where one encounters reticular cells and macrophages. Next is the paracortex, the region of the lymph node between the cortex and the medulla, and the set of T cells. The paracortex is characterized by high endothelial venules through which T and B cells enter from the blood. Histologically, one sees enlargement of this region during an immune response. Can you think of why this is the case? It's because the immune response results in recruitment and proliferation of immune cells. Take a moment to reflect on the beautiful architecture of the lymph node and remind yourself of the cell types that occupy each region. Developing an appreciation for the lymphatic drainage of different regions of the body helps guide physical exams, especially in instances of infection and inflammation, as well as malignancy. Certain body region and lymph node associations are particularly important to understand. The upper limb and lateral breast drain to the axillary nodes. This is important because of where most breast cancers occur, the upper outer quadrant of the breast, and hence why sentinel node biopsy typically involves interrogation of the axillary lymph nodes when staging breast cancer. You can read the rest of these for yourself, as they're all probably important to some degree, but a good overall concept to keep in mind is that the right lymphatic duct receives lymphatic drainage from the right arm and right half of the head, while the thoracic duct drains everything else. The spleen's another important set of immunologic modulation. Just as we did in discussing the lymph node, it's important to recognize the organ's architecture, as well as the types of cells located here. The sinusoids are long vascular channels located in the red pulp of the spleen, nearby which macrophages are located. The macrophages in the spleen play an important role in the removal of encapsulated bacteria. Recall from microbiology, the encapsulated bacteria, Salmonella, S. pneumoniae, H. influenzae, and N. meningitidis, which can be remembered with the acronym S-SHIN. Vaccination against these latter three, as no vaccine exists for Salmonella, is imperative in patients undergoing splenectomy, as they lose their innate ability to ward off encapsulated bacteria. So here's a good question for you. If you have a patient in his or her teens who complains of occasional joint pain and scleral icterus, what major spleen-affecting disease might you think of? Right, sickle cell disease. Sickle cell patients whose disease process mandates either splenectomy or leads to autosplenectomy through progressive splenic infarction are another population with increased susceptibility to encapsulated bacteria and thusly are immunized as well. The concern for salmonella is why these patients are frequently on prophylactic penicillin. T cells are found in the periarterial lymphatic sheath as well as the white pulp of the spleen. B cells are found in the follicles within the white pulp of the spleen. The marginal zone in between the red and white pulp of the spleen is where antigen-presenting cells are found. The thymus is the site of T cell differentiation and maturation. Conveniently, one can remember this by thymus for T cells and bone marrow for B cells, if only the rest of medicine were so intuitive. In terms of its embryology, the thymus is another encapsulated lymphoid organ, just like the spleen and the lymph node, derived from the epithelium of the third branchial pouches. Like the lymph node, the thymus also consists of a cortex and a medulla. The cortex houses immature T cells, while the medulla contains mature T cells, M for mature in the medulla, as well as reticular cells and Hassel's corpuscles, which are concentrically arranged dead reticular cells. The corticomedullary junction has particular importance inasmuch as this is the site of positive and negative T cell restriction, which we'll discuss later.